All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to solve a differential equation with a clever twist. And if you watch this video till the end, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. So in particular, let's find some functions whose derivative equals to the square root of this function. And just for simplicity, we will assume that our input is greater or equal to zero. Not very important, but it does make our work easier. Now, for this equation, one way to solve it is to write y prime as dy over dx and cross multiplying. But let's keep it pure for a second, please. And in particular, let's divide by square root of y. So y prime over square root of y equals 1. And notice, you can write this as a derivative. So this almost looks like the derivative of square root of y. But the only problem is, if you keep it like that, you get y prime over 2 square root of y. So to get rid of this 2, you just multiply this by 2. And you can check that this works. So 2 square root of y prime equals 1. And then 2 square root of y, if you integrate, that is x plus some constant. And then square root of y equals x plus some constant over 2. And then to get y, you just square that. So x plus c over 2 squared. And that's x plus c squared over 4. Claro que si. Um, and once I solved this for the first time, I was like, I don't believe this solution because this has squares. What does it have to do with square roots? Well, in order to do this, let's just check our answer. Because um, look, what happens if you calculate the derivative? So y prime, that is 2 times x plus c over 4, and that's x plus c over 2. On the other hand, remember x was greater or equal to 0. So if this constant is greater or equal to 0, we may assume this whole thing is greater or equal to 0. Which, by the way, makes sense because we want y prime to be the square root. So y prime should be uh, greater or equal to 0. So in particular, this does equal to the square root of the square. So x plus c over 2 squared. And remember, that's just y. So indeed, y prime equals square root of y. Now, I told you at the beginning that there's a twist at the end of the video. Well, here's the twist. Because let's try to solve this equation, but with an initial condition. So now let's just assume, let's say y at 0 equals 0. Well, if you plug in x equals 0, what happens? So on the one hand, 0 equals y of 0, but that becomes 0 plus c squared over 4, and that is c squared over 4. You set that equal to 0, so then you get c squared equals 0, and the only solution with that is c equals 0, which tells us that a solution of this equation is y equals x squared over 4. So you can check this solves the equation and y at 0 equals 0. Now here comes the question. Is this the only solution? It turns out that no. Because for instance, what's another function that satisfies this? Well, the 0 function that also works. The derivative is 0, which is square root of 0, and initially it is 0. So this works, this works, and even worse, it turns out this equation has infinitely many solutions. Because for any positive constant c, you could also have the function, which is 0 up to c, and then x minus c squared over 4. You can also check that this satisfies the equation. And again, it doesn't matter if we put plus c or minus c, because uh, uh, c is arbitrary. So in particular, if you want a concrete example, the function, which is 1, 0 up to 1, and then just becomes x minus 1 squared over 4. 
So again, in particular, this equation has infinitely many solutions, even with an initial condition. But then you might be like, Payam, isn't that weird? Because isn't there a theorem that says differential equations with initial conditions have a unique solution? Well, yes, but no, because remember this theorem has assumptions and it turns out one of those assumptions fails. And let me explain you what went wrong here. Because y prime equals square root of y, well, in this case, the function is the square root function. So let's say f of x equals square root of x. Now, it is continuous, so that's not a problem. But what went wrong is that this function, even though continuous, is not what's called Lipschitz continuous at 0, if you want. And what does that mean in layman's terms? So it's still continuous, meaning that inputs that are small gives you outputs that are small. But what is happening here is, again, even though continuous, it's still weird. Because even if the inputs are small, relatively speaking, the outputs are big. So they're kind of far apart. So there is this anomaly, and in particular notice, there is this infinite tangent line at zero. So uh, that's why, because this function is broken, this derivative is broken as well. So we got to go to the L'Hopital. So again, for differential equations, weird stuff happens. All right. Uh, if you want to see, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.